sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. We seek the memorial of the Lord's Paschal solemnity. In this way, listening to his, most, to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday and today. the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All times belong to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. by his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Christ our light. Share the, and I'll pass the light on to all of you and all of you who are watching this evening. We're going to be lighting these candles in the front of the altar and they represent all of you. This light of Christ, this light of the, our, God's presence and love poured into our hearts on our baptisms to be rekindled on this night. And this light reminds us of that light that's always burning, that eternal flame of God's glory that the cross could not defeat, that death could not overcome. Christ our light.
Christ our light. Now we have the singing of that most ancient hymn, the Exalted, the Easter Exalted. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy. Filled with the mighty voices of the people. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy, among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We live the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true 
whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now, throughout the world, sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, oh, wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling to ransom a slave. Have you you gave away your son, O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that burns so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Oh, how truly blessed night, or oh, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written. The night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me. And full of gladness, the sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames, 
Divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere until to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these last days has sent his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let me now be seated as you extinguish your candles carefully. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light Scott Day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, 
and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky, to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are 
clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. Oceans as a garment, you conceived it. Above the mountains, the water stood. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You send forth your springs into the water courses. That wind among the mountains Beside them the birds of the heavens dwell From among the branches they send forth their song Lord, send out your spirit And renew the face of the earth The water, the mountains from your palace the earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord? them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelite, Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff and, with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the mists of the sea on dry land, 
with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the mists of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head-on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them back into its mist. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will, I will sing, sing to the Lord, for he, he is gloriously triumphant. triumphant. Horse and chariot he cast into the sea. The Lord. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has made been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. The right hand, O oh Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance the place where you made your seed O oh Lord 
the sanctuary, Lord, which your hand established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. O God of ancient wonders, remain undimmed in splendor, even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right, right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that you were baptized into Christ Jesus? Were also baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, 
just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For we have grown into union with him through a death like his. We shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved of his sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin in living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him, 
and became like dead men. Then the angel said, angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Just one little announcement here. I encourage you to go to our parish website to read our bulletin and see what, what's going on. And all the announcements are in there. And otherwise, uh, just to let you know, we'll be gathering again tomorrow morning for the celebration of our Easter Sunday Mass at 9.30 a.m. And uh, every Sunday uh, during this time, uh, 9.30 a.m., uh, live streaming uh, our Mass. So we hope you will continue to enjoy uh, Join with us as we continue our, our Easter celebration for these uh, many weeks ahead. There was a teacher, a religion teacher of a, of a, a grade of young children, and, and she was teaching them about uh, the resurrection, and she asked the question, what did Jesus say uh, after his resurrection? And this little girl raised her hand and said, Ta-da! Of course he did. Of course he did. Um, you know, you know f- for us, what would we have said? You know, most of us would be, we'd come back and say, all right, you guys, you left me. You denied me. You, you know, we would be, you ran off just when I needed you. It's, now it's, you know, it's payback. Now it's time to, you know, right wrongs and let's take care of... Um, you know, we might have a different reaction, but Jesus, he, he never brings any of that up. You know, even his own breath is forgiveness. He breathes forgiveness. You know, he's not into blaming, seeking revenge. It's restoring, renewing, transforming. You know, that's, you know, that's what God is about. And Jesus reveals the heart of God himself. You know, forgiveness, restoration, not simply forgiving for what they did. He changed the source from which those behaviors came. Not simply forgiving the, the sins of the world, uh, but the sin of the world. The source, not simply the symptoms. The experience of feeling separate, unloved, disconnected. So as, in order to trust, to hope, to love again, without being overwhelmed by fear, fear, shame, and grief. There was a saint, a, a holy man, who lived out in the desert, and one day someone went out to him and asked him what was necessary to be one with God. And the holy man was sitting there uh, making a rope. And without glancing up, he simply said, you're looking at it. And I suppose the point this holy man, the saint, was trying to get across was, and being fully present with an all-loving, all-embracing, an all-compassionate and forgiving way to everyone, to everything, we allow God to be present through us. The God who is present to us to be present through us. To be a channel and instrument of that gift. Respecting the dignity, the value, the worth of all things and of all life and of all people in a way that frees us from clinging or holding on to any one thing. That's the gift of Jesus, the resurrection, giving us new life, giving us new hope, restoring and making new. This year's Easter may seem a little different 
for us. To be honest, it's actually more like the first Easter. That first Easter was not in a crowded church with Easter lilies and Easter music. On that very first Easter, the disciples were locked in their homes. They were afraid. It was too dangerous for them to go outside, especially to go where other people were. If they left their homes, you know, their lives would be at risk, kind of like today. When Jesus appeared to the women at the tomb, the angel appeared to them at the tomb he, uh, and said for them, conveying what Jesus was, was saying, go and tell my brothers. Go tell people who need to hear this good news. And so many of us at this time are like those first disciples in need of that good news to be preached to us. In the Roman world, whenever Caesar Augustus, the emperor, would achieve a military victory, there would be people who would go out and announce that as as gospel, as good news. There had been a victory. Announcers of that kind of good news, of victory, were called evangelists. So it's interesting to see how Christians took on that same word, evangelist, to proclaim that the one that the military powers of Rome thought that they had defeated on the cross had actually accomplished a victory over them from what Jesus allowed God to do through him. Now at that time, the cross was seen as an object of utter and complete defeat, humiliation, shame, and ridicule. For it to become the way by which God could accomplish anything was unthinkable. But in Jesus, through his trusting, surrendering to, being open to the power of his Father's love, in the midst of weakness, of vulnerability, of helplessness, of powerlessness, by being still and trusting and allowing God to bring about his victory. Now that is good news. So you can just imagine, when the disciples heard that good news of that victory, from the woman, that Jesus and his way, that Jesus demonstrated of letting go, of emptying, surrendering, trusting in the power, the presence, the life, and the love of God, it seemed too good to be true. And it would take time for it to sink in. Resurrection didn't mean that things would be as they were before. Things would be new and different. When Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, She reached out to embrace him. And Jesus said, no, do not cling to me. Do not cling to me in the way I was. I'm not in the same way. In other words, I will be with all of you now in a new way. In other words, resurrection is not resuscitation. Jesus was resurrected, not resuscitated. It is not going back to the way things were, but moving on to a new and greater and deeper and fuller reality. They would need those 40 days to grieve the loss of Good Friday and the new reality revealed on Easter Sunday. They would need ascension to let go of Jesus as he was ascend in order to receive the spirit of Jesus on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, in a wholehearted manner to live this life. So that Good Friday, Easter Sunday, the 40 days, the ascension and the Pentecost, this embrace of this paschal mystery, this journey, which we are all invited to take. Early in the morning on that first Easter, their alleluia was still a bit muted. They were still suffering, experiencing guilt, fear, and loss. In many ways, the outward reality of our lives, too, may still seem to be more in Lent than in Easter, with things that we are struggling with, especially at this time, this year. But like Jesus And following that way, that emptying can continue to open us to a greater life, a deeper bond, a closer connection with him, a deeper communion with each other, with Easter, with resurrection, and with Pentecost. It's the way that we become that fertile ground into which the author of life can enter in and plant the seed of his life. The word alleluia, of course, means praise to the Lord. On Easter, it tends to be sung very joyously. But at that first Easter, it was still a little bit more muted. I'm sure it was sung more like Leonard Cohen's version of Alleluia. 
a cold and broken alleluia. But it was be- a beginning, a beginning of hope, a glimpse of light beginning to stream into the darkness of that first Easter morning. So they began to believe that hope was possible, that the night was over and that God's love was filling and transforming the emptiness of Good Friday, which gives us the hope of daring to believe that hope is always on the horizon. So in a similar way, this quarantine can also be like at many Good Friday, through which can, we can look forward to a hope of a resurrection, of a new beginning. Perhaps through our experience of isolation and confinement, maybe it can make us a little more sensitive and aware of how others feel, especially the elderly when they aren't visited, or people in nursing homes when they're by themselves. And that way we can begin to live with a new and bigger mind and heart and and care and compassion. Perhaps social distancing can be the way to stronger and closer communal bonds. So when this passes and it is safe for us to come together, we will come out, gather together, but not in the same way as before. In nature, there are little glimpses of this. Water beetles becoming dragonflies, caterpillars becoming butterflies, tadpoles becoming frogs, the eggs becoming the chick. In each case, an empty shell, an empty tomb is left behind. The eggshell is shattered and left behind which is why the Easter egg is such a great and symbol of Easter, celebrating more what we receive rather than what we leave behind, the empty tomb that reveals the resurrected life. So after this time has passed, we will hopefully also be different, not taking things for granted, so many of the ordinary things of daily life, more aware of the blessings as well as the limitations of virtual and online relationships but most of all, proclaiming and living and proclaiming the good news that at the heart of reality is a God who brings life even out of death and more aware of death than resurrection as a universal pattern that we continue to embrace and live out of throughout our lives, following the way of Jesus himself as a way to trust in the eternal love of of his Father. At the beginning of our Easter um, mass. It's traditionally been a time when you take two seemingly, two rocks, two seemingly lifeless, inanimate objects, and you smash them together, and out of them a, a spark emerges, revealing that, giving us a glimpse that at the heart of everything is a, there's an eternal and divine light and spark that burns at the heart of each person and all reality. And that's what we, out of that, the light of the Easter candle begins to light. A light that cannot be extinguished and which underlies all death and resurrection. That burned brightly in the life of Jesus and continues to burn on. Represented in our Paschal candle. And to be rekindled in each and every one of us on this Easter celebration. I saw a picture recently of um, healthcare workers. And this particular uh, picture depicted healthcare workers tending uh, to the body of Jesus, the wounded body of Christ. You know, and I, I think we, in them, we see a glimpse of that same eternal light, that spark of divine love, tending and caring for the body of Christ and those most in need in our world. And that same light, that same hope that seeks to be enkindled in each one of us to continue to allow and transform sickness to health, darkness to light, death to new life as an ongoing reality in which we continue to be called forth to be participating in the very mission of Christ that continues in our world with the, the support of his love, his abiding presence for our life and for the life of the world. So may our Easter celebration continue, and may our Easter lives continue to grow in the service of our world and our brothers and sisters, so that what we began on that first Easter can continue in our hearts and our lives for the life of our world.
and the celebration of Easter. It's a, there's a, it's a celebration of new life, of new beginnings, and through the waters of baptism, an opportunity for uh, new life to grow, and as people respond to this uh, love of God in their lives, as we all seek to do through our baptismal commitments. So at this time, we have, i like to call forth those who are to be received fully into the Catholic Church this evening. Kevin Cameron and Kurt Thomas, along with their sponsors. My dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayer come to the aid of these our brothers in their blessed hope, so that as they approach full communion, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. As we join in singing together now, calling upon all the saints in glory uh, to share their blessing and the blessings of love and God's life as we join with them at this time, the litany of the saints. John Bigney, 
As we prepare to welcome these new members into this communion of saints, we now have the blessing of the baptismal font. My dear brothers and sisters, we humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptisms. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to, be, to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan River, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received through Christ our Lord. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried with Christ in the death of baptism may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. I'll be having, for all of us, a renewal of our baptisms. And for Kevin, it will be his stating, his baptismal uh, commitment. And, and for, for Kurt, uh, a renewal of his baptismal promises as well. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us state the promises of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God and his holy Catholic Church. So I ask Kevin and Kurt, do you renounce Satan and all of you? And all his works? And all of you? And all his empty promises? All of you? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? These are our beliefs and expression of our faith. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life forever and ever. I invite Kevin to come forward for his baptism. Kevin, I baptize you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Kevin, God our Father has freed you and given you a new birth by water and the Spirit. 
He now welcomes you into his holy people and invites you to always live as a faithful member of his holy people. Let's give a nice welcome into our parish family to the waters of baptism to Kevin. At this time, we renew our own baptismal lives. The sprinkling. So, Kurt, you renew your, your baptism and your sponsors and all of you. Myself as well. And all of you who are out there watching. <laughs> I try not to get the cameras wet. At this time, we will prepare for the celebration of, um, first of all, our newly baptized. We will be given uh, the light of Christ. As all of us held those little candles at the beginning of the celebration of the Easter Vigil, all those who were baptized, and now Kevin will have an opportunity to also receive this light Invite his sponsor to come forward. You may share that with him. Kevin, receive the light of Christ. This light is entrusted to you all now to be kept burning brightly within him, for he is now a child of the light. Keep the flame of faith and fire of God's love alive in his heart. So when the Lord comes, he may go out to meet him with all of the saints. You put on Christ, in him you've been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. As we now prepare for the celebration of confirmation. Kurt and Kevin, when you were baptized, you were born again in Christ. And you, have become, you became members of Christ and his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors in baptism to the baptized. He promised the strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive. He will make you more like Christ and help you to be a witness to a suffering death and resurrection. He will strengthen you to be an active member of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. All of you, please, please pray with me now to God our Father that he will pour out his Holy Spirit on these uh, this candidate and his catechumen for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. And please extend your hands. All powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you have freed your children from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and their guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill, fill them with a spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Kurt, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Kevin, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. I now present you fully initiated members into our Catholic Church and our parish community. Kurt and Kevin. We thank them, their friends, their families. We thank those who prepared them through the OCIA program. You guys may be seated at this time. And they'll be prepared to receive, make their first communion uh, later uh, in the Mass. We now bring our needs and petitions to the Lord, having celebrate, celebrated 
celebrating these Easter mysteries, we now receive this wonderful gift of resurrection, the gift of Easter, and now how we can share that with our world through our prayer and through our service as we call to mind the needs that are out there. For our Holy Father and all believers, that their faith in the resurrection make them joyful messengers of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For community leaders, preachers, and teachers, that their public acts proclaim justice and mercy for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have not heard or who have not believed, that their hearts be stirred by the example of those who proclaim the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have received the Easter sacraments tonight, that their faith continue to deepen throughout their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this Eucharistic community, that their understanding of the Paschal mystery grow daily. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer line intentions and the intentions of those who remembered loved ones through their Easter flower donations and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. that they may be joined to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and all the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we call out to you in our need, confident that you hear us and answers, answer us. May we also be the answers to one another's prayers through our lives of service. We make these prayers and these commitments now of our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Shit. 
and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, our good and good of all, his holy church. Except, except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what is begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures, and when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offer them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit gracious, graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. But when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. We remember, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you at home to share peace now with one another.
the world grant us peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This time, I invite you at home to enter into a spiritual communion, inviting Jesus into your hearts, into your lives, as we pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. shadows deepen do you know that all the dark won't stop light from getting through do you wish that you could see it all made new
Let us pray. Pour out upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. I just want to thank you for joining us for this celebration of, of the Easter Vigil and this beautiful way that we are able to gather together and celebrate what connects us deeply, uh, the love of, of our God, and allowing that love to grow deeper in us. So even while we're apart, we're one. We're still together, united in a loving God that commits us more fully to caring for his body and, and his people and loving him in that way during this time in a special way. So we want to thank all those of you who are watching, all those uh, who have created our beautiful, uh, all the flowers, all the great donate, wonderful donations to the, uh, uh, the donations of the Easter flowers. We want to thank all those involved in, in the ministries, uh, lectors, many of you who, are, who, are, who have served throughout the year. We usually recognize on this, on this holiday because the Eucharist ministers, our altar servers, our musicians, um, all those who are making possible this, uh, this broadcast. Uh, so thanks uh, to all of you and all your ministries. And, and so we hope that you can continue to celebrate with us. Uh, we'll be on the air again tomorrow morning for the Easter Sunday celebration at 9.30 a.m. And, and every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, throughout this time. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with a prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. In the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain for you, with you forever. Masses ended, go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. And a happy Easter to all, and to all a good night. Jesus Christ is risen today.
Thank you.